that night really, in addition to shattering glass, shattered everything that we we had in our lives. Really, um, people, um, German soldiers, barged into our apartment looking for uh, su supposedly some men, which they didn't find, obviously, and. I think my parents realized that we'd better get out of there. And actually on my ninth birthday, uh, March 1, 1939, my brother and I got smuggled into France. A lady took us in saying that we were her children. And after a few months, we got shipped to a, a home in the outskirts of Paris. There were probably several hundred children there. I was with the younger kids, but most of them were a little bit older. I don't know how, but I think we got on, if not the last train, one of the last trains going south of Paris. The, uh, this organization, the OSE, had taken over an old abandoned chateau. And the kids all worked. We had to clean it up and get it ready to, to Bedding appeared somehow. I don't know who, who, who did all this, but this, uh, several hundred people, young kids, stayed there. Word came out that some children were going to the United States. And I think we got on the list because the U.S. had decided, out of their own goodness of their heart, to take in about 250 Jewish refugee children. My, but they wouldn't take anybody who was over 15 years of age. And my brother was about to be 15. So I think that's the reason we got on the first transport. We, we took off in June of 41, and we landed in Ellis Island, like everybody else. Actually, it was just about a week and a half before my brother turned 15. So we just barely made it insofar as he was concerned. I mean, there's so many of these stories out there, and, and that's why I always thought, hey, my story is nothing. I just came here, life started, and, and that's it. Artie is this one here, what Kern. He's the one you really, I think, would want, enjoy talking to, because he keeps up with everybody, all the people from Europe, where they are, and, and he, he traveled back there, and he's got, he's got much more interesting stories than I do. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, they, it's right. true. Hello. My friend, Art Kern. And we've Thank known each other so for uh, like 66 years or something like that. Yeah, 1930, March 1939. Right. So you actually met in, in your France, life. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We were in the same children's home. Yeah. But he's older than I am, so... <laughs> but, better, but much better looking. Much better looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just show you some things. This, for instance, is the list of children for the, uh, for the kinder transport from, from Austria to France. And uh, if you notice, I'm on here, Kernberg Oswald. That was child number 20. Okay. Um, here was the second transport. Some of my friends are on here. And this was the, the initial list that was made up, and it is called the, uh, the Urgent Cases. And on there, my brother is on here, too. Uh, see, Kernberg Fritz, Kernberg Oswald, but he, they, they didn't take him. Okay. My brother was uh, 13, and they wouldn't take anybody who was 13 or older, so I wound up going to France, and he wound up uh, staying in Austria and eventually being deported with my parents and gotten killed. And I came to France with 50 other kids from Vienna. Uh, we were placed in this cloister, and uh, most of the kids were moved to a place called Chateau Laguette, which was run by Baron de Rothschild. Uh, but some of us went to a home also near uh, Paris in Montmorency, uh, called Villa Chenet, uh, and that's where I wound up, along with Fred, yeah. under the auspices of a French organization called Oeuvre de Secours des Enfants, or abbreviated OSE, and everybody calls it OSE, because that's the way you pronounce it in German. When this whole thing happened in Austrian Germany, they started taking kids in, uh, like us, and uh, just supporting them. 
and uh, you well, know, we, we lived pretty normal lives. Yeah. Where we went to school, we studied, we, we played a lot of sports, right? And, yeah. and life wasn't bad until September 1939. 39, when suddenly the well, actually, it was later. It was 1940. Yeah, well, okay, but from September 39 until June of 40, it was like it a kept quiet getting and worse and worse and worse. And worse. Like, there really was very little fighting, and everybody thought this was going to not be such a bad deal. And then suddenly the Germans broke through Belgium, invaded France, and next thing you know, we got on literally one of the last trains right. out of Paris going south. We, we moved into this big old country estate which had been boarded up, but it was empty, there was nothing in it which the, uh, I guess, the refugee organization rented. It was an old castle, Chateau Montantin. Mm -hmm. uh, when we moved in, there was nothing there. It was just a completely empty okay. castle. Spider webs. Uh, yeah. Not a spider web. There, there were no beds, there were no chairs. Yeah, there were no chairs, there were no beds, there was nothing, okay? And uh, some of the older boys who went to the carpenter shop started making benches and tables and so forth, and later on beds appeared, but at first we used to sleep on the floor. They set up a carpentry shop and the uh, older Children made furniture, and other people learned shoemaking. We made our own shoes, and we would walk in the, in the woods, pick apples and things until the farmers chased us away, but we would save them for the winter months. We wanted to make wine, okay, when we were in, 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 in the Montantin. Yeah, we, and we didn't know how to make wine. All we had is one of these little hand presses thing, and uh, we, uh, we... squeezed apples. Yeah, we, we, used to, we used to steal apples from the farmers, and we squeeze them, and then we put them into bottles, and we, we had a storage place where we hide them from the, uh, the grown-ups, right? Because we weren't supposed to do that, well, I guess. to vinegar, I guess. Well, <laughs> not only that, but I want to remember that... Oh, they exploded? <laughs> they exploded! <laughs> my, my dearest friends to this day, is, uh, to this day are... A group of people who were refugees with me in that in that home. We used to get together where most everybody lost all their families, and so we we've become each other's family with going to bar mitzvahs and weddings of children, now grandchildren. And we we get together regularly. Uh, here's a group picture, and for instance, here's Freddie with the beret. Okay, and I'm right over here. The last year in France was tough because there was not enough food, there were not enough clothes, people had the shoes. If you didn't have shoes, you had to get these sabots, these we, wooden shoes. We, we made them. It, it was tough, and uh, we were glad to leave France because we knew that our parents were deported. Like, my parents were deported in uh, February of 1941 uh, from Vienna, and... Uh, well, my father died in Germany. My father died when we were mom on sea, because yes, I remember yeah, when he died, we were, uh, we were the whole sugar. camp yeah. was mourning for, for, your, for your father, mm -hmm. right? I think he got TB, really, and, and he, he was quite ill for a while, for a number of years. We never really, to this day, don't know how he died, whether his illness uh, killed him or if the Germans finally just said, well, we don't want to be bothered with sick Jews. It, it, was, it was tough, and then you know, some of the parents who had fled to France wanted to get the kids back, so kids so went to, back to be with, them, to be with, to 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 be with the parents, camp. and some of them were deported, they were all deported. If they turned 16, the French would say, well, you're, you're enemy aliens, you were Germans, so they turned all the older kids into, uh, into internment camps. When the Elysee recognized that these kids were really in life's danger, they started taking action to get the kids out. Okay? Eventually, the Jose just uh, disbanded their homes and tried to hide everybody. And they... well, well, we we left in '41, right. but in '42, the Germans took over all of right. France, and that was it. There was no more Vichy government. And... Right, and that's when they started picking up a lot of kids, and other kids got killed in these, uh, from the from the homes. And they, they got permission through various ways uh, to to send about a thousand children to the United States. Uh, but they uh, only got out, they only got about 250 out. What the Americans wanted, they wanted the younger children because they were easier to place. But the Jose tried to get the older ones out. So the first transport had a lot of 14 and 15 year olds. And I was supposed to be on the first transport and two days before they left, they told me I can't go. Why? I don't know. But I was taken off the transport. Interesting, this girl over here, she was supposed to also go on the first transport with me and also was taken off. But I made on the second one and she never made it and she eventually got deported. Mm. The luck of the draw. Yeah. Most of these kids were deported because they were the older ones. Most of them got killed. Well, most of our families got murdered over there, so we've become each other's family in effect. Going Th to That's to, how most of us feel, to, that to, we're sort of like a family. To, uh, yeah, I have no art better than everybody except my brother. 
Now here's a list of the first transport to come to the United States. And that's all the children who wanted the first transport, and Fred and his brother were on here. Berg, Ron Stern, Ring about yeah. Here, sure. yeah. Siegfried Jamna, Julius Jamna, and it gives a little bit of history. Fred born in March 1st, 1930, and Jay in July 25th, both Germans. And it says, your father deceased, mother Ida J in Milan, Italy, brother Isidore Jamna lives in New York, stranded in France. I could have sworn Jay was on here. Is this Jay? I think that's Jay, isn't yes, it? Yes, looks like him. Yeah, yes. that's, his, that's uh, our friend's brother on the first transport. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We left in May of uh, 41, and Vichy France didn't you know, get to totally taken over until I think it was like August 42. So it was another 15 months afterwards that children were being recycled in and out. I remember for days on end, I would sit right yeah. At the bow? I don't yeah, know. this is the stern, that's the yeah. bow. Well, my feet over, there was a thing there, and I would sit and watch it go up and down. We went like steerage all the way. But we, we, I think we went third, third class, but we ate second class so we can get a little. I don't know. But when there was food, I ate it. <laughs> that was really a terrible little crummy ship, but it, it did make it across. And uh, seeing the Statue of Liberty was a thrill, like so many immigrants that. I'll never forget. And we came to America, and I didn't speak one word of English when I, when I came here. The main thing I remember when we came, and my, my aunt and uncle picked us up and we stopped for a chocolate malt. I never had tasted anything like so wonderful in the whole world. It was just <laughs> unbelievable. My father's sister lived in Brooklyn, so my aunt knew about us coming. So she met us at, at the uh, boat with my uncle. She took us in, in Borough Park, Brooklyn. And uh, this was, in, it was the end of June. And by the time I went to school in September, I could speak English pretty darn well. Uh, my mother had, had written, she, she got stuck in Italy in Trieste. Trieste is a, a city where they speak German and Italian. My mother had blue eyes and blonde hair, and she passed as a, a Germanic person, and, and she spent the war in Trieste, survived the war. And we got a letter from the Red Cross that my mother had sent out that she had survived. She was in a building, had been hit by a bomb, and she was in a hospital, and had written to my aunt in Brooklyn saying, are my children with you? And if so, what can we do? It took about eight, nine months more. She came over in 1946, late 46. It was, not, it was not a reunion. I couldn't speak to her. I could only speak English. And she spoke about five languages, none of which was English. It was very, very, it was very strange. My mother couldn't work with her. She really wasn't healthy yet. She had shrapnel in her from uh, when she was in the building that was hit with a bomb. And it was just unbelievably difficult. After my brother went in, in the... Uh, into the army. I got my first job, I think I was 13 years old. I took over his grocery route. And to this day, I haven't stopped working. The only, the only easy time off of the two years in the army. The rest of the time, I, I've been working ever since. Famous jun Montauk Junior High School in Brooklyn. And I am over here. A lot of people can't pick me up. My brother just, just said, we have to go to college. We have to do something with, with ourselves. And a lot of my friends, from Brooklyn and elsewhere, everybody, all the Jewish guys, just said we have to go. It was understood that we would try to go to college somehow. After my first year, I used to work in the mornings, and then I, I switched to night school, and I worked all day. I had a full-time job while I went to school studying accounting. Try to study and then right back to, to work the next day. It was just impossible. Artie came out here first uh, to Los Angeles. Then he said, that's really nice. I'm going to go move out there. And then he would write me back and he said, well, it doesn't snow and they seem to have jobs for accountants. Another friend who was also, the three of us all, all were in the same home in, in France. He came out, he was in the military with me, actually, we're in the same outfit. He came out here and he's an accountant. He said, yeah, there are jobs here for accountants. So I said, by God, I'll 
run away from my mother from New York and I would come out here. When I got out of the Army, I just put my duffel bag in the car and came west instead of east. And we all made our, our lives out here, and they all have children, grandchildren. I was then just turned 25. Anyway, when they got out of the army, first Aaron and then Fred, they came out to California. I already had a house, and they came and stayed with me for a little bit, and then until they got my own. I was a managing partner of a CPA firm for about 30 of those 40 years. Built up a really nice firm, had a wonderful career, and life has gone really very well. And uh, now we're both retired. We had a very nice life. I've sent so we sent all, both of us sent our kids to college, and I had three kids in college at the same time. And uh, you know, I, I really had a very nice life, and, which I don't think it could have happened anywhere else except in America. Isn't it nice? It could be photographed. That's funny, but, but we, we made an offer on another house, which was like an old house, but it added on. Two weeks later, we came up again looking at other houses, and we realized, you yeah, know, this. You know, so I bad. feel a little... We, we, we ran back here to look better. We made the offer right, right then and there. It was unbelievable luck. Best move I ever made. Yeah. To come here out of a little tiny group was you know, you're afraid to tell people, look how lucky I am. I don't think I'm alone in that feeling. I, 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 none of us ever talked about it. Uh, when I get together with my friends, uh, my closest friends, the two who brought me to L.A., they lost all their family, their parents, siblings, everybody. They're the nicest people you ever want to meet, the wonderful parents, grandparents. And we talk about our time in... in France, but they all have wonderful senses of humor. They're happy, outgoing. But inside, I know we all have a, a little shell, I think, that we're still, whether it's guilt or feeling of st still being a refugee in a strange land, I really don't know. This is the translation that I made of the last letter my father wrote, written on the day of my bar mitzvah but I translated into English. How, yeah. who, how did it get to you? Who, who it forward? was written to Switzerland. To Switzerland? Yeah. And then forward to And forward to me. They were already deported to Poland, or Poland, 19 October 1941. They were already in a ghetto. My dearest love, today on your birthday, as well as your day of Bar Mitzvah, we all, that is, dearest mother, your brother Fritz and I, are sitting in a tiny, tiny room and are constantly both thinking and talking about you. Our total longing and thoughts are only addressed at you and you alone, and our deepest wish is to be able to be together with you again in peace and in joy. Please do not let us wait long for any news from you, but write as often as you can. And the more often we hear from you, the greater will be our joy. And now, my golden-haired youngest son, I give you my innermost congratulations and blessings on this, your most important and solemn day. May your luck shine and be as bright as the stars in heaven, and may it be written in our future to be able to hold you in our arms and make life again nicer for you as we have always strived to do. In my thoughts, I lift my hands over your head and bless you with the blessings from the Bible. May God bless and shelter you and protect you. 
and always hold his right hand over you. You're always faithful and loving Papa. Hmm. Wonderful letter. Yeah. When was that written? 19, October 1941. This is all the children from France who were deported. Who were, who were deported. Many of them and, and, and we knew. And they, got, they, got, they got, actually to say where they went to, where they went. About transport to Auschwitz transport, and so forth. And then they have little stories of the, 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 the kids. kids. Yeah. And it's just heartbreaking to see the beautiful kids, how well they're all, you know, middle class, but dressed nicely, you know, decent people. You see, if you, if you look at the, in the United States, what some of the refugees achieved over here, you just wonder what these six, six right. million plus could have, plus all the other people who were murdered, you know, what they could have achieved. Um, who knows where we would be in science and medicine and economics and everything. Or if the U.S. had let in more people like uh, Albert Einstein, who knows how many other Einsteins were in this group? And these are just in, from France. We're getting about from Poland, where there were. And these are only the ones where they could find pictures of. Right. right. Yeah, most of them they, they never could. full of kids who made it out of all of these. They have a list yeah. in the beginning mm -hmm. of uh, the 250 kids yeah, who two, were sent to the United States. Yeah, 253 children yeah. who came here on the transports. That's where, where we are on this. Right. And both of us are on this list. I'm here. Yeah. Jamna. And you're here. And I'm here. Hey, fellow, we made it, didn't we? Well, somehow, yes. <laughs>